Pitt Panthers are with us. Jamel Artis, James Robinson represent the student athletes. Coach Jamie Dixon is here. We're going to ask him to make a statement on the game, and then we will take questions for all three gentlemen from Pitt. Jamie, please. Well, I'm proud of our people, our, our players, and, and uh, how hard they played, how hard they worked this week in preparing and getting ready, and our effort was. Uh, Remarkable. I'm proud of what we did. I'm disappointed in the loss, but uh, we battled, we played, we defended, and uh, just came down to making some shots or not making some shots and getting to the free throw line. And But uh, we played hard. We played uh, together. We played smart. And uh, we give Wisconsin credit. But I'm proud of these guys. I'm proud of James, our seniors, our three graduate seniors as well. They came here and got an opportunity to play in the tournament. But uh, we came up short. And uh, I think the rebounding uh, got away from us in the second half. And I thought that was a big part of it. Questions for all three gentlemen, starting right here. And that'll be two. Go. James, can you kind of walk us through that? The last play where it looked like maybe you ran into Mike a little bit coming down the, the lane. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, I got the rebound. It was about 10 seconds on the clock. And I, I was, you know, just tried to get, you know, a good shot. Um, I just ran into my own teammate, so. In that situation, do you have like a set, like a go-to thing you're looking for there? Just get the best shot, I mean. Obviously, I didn't mean to run into him. He didn't mean to run into me. It just, it just happened. Um, and that's what it came down to. Second row. Jamie, this start, and even for Jamel, too, the start to the second half, 16 fouls in the first minute and a half of the half. Jamel, I guess first for you and then for you, Coach, kind of what did you see out there in the change for the six fouls? And did that kind of uh, you know, change the game plan? Because you guys controlled the tempo, I think, pretty well in the first half, but it kind of slipped in the second. Yeah, I mean, obviously, it was it was a, a, a drastic change, and you know, I mean, you just got to play through it. But uh, we had the lead plenty of times later after that, so we had opportunities and and uh, situations, and uh, you know, you got to play through some adversity, and that certainly was some adversity, and we did, and we put ourselves in position to win it a number of times, uh, but we didn't get it done. So. Um, you know, we got it. We, 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 our goal was to get to the foul line more than they did, but they got to the foul line more. Jamel, like comment a, on the efficient <clears throat> on your foul trouble? Yeah, um, the fouls was very key in the second half, um, but that didn't lose us the game. Like I said, we had a lot of opportunities to win in the game. So, um, like you said, we got to fight through adversity, and I think we did that, and we got ourselves back in the game. It was like a little rebounds and stuff like that. You know, we got to hit free throws at the end, basically. Jamie, what about uh, the way the game went or what you thought about the matchup? You don't like a guy like Ryan Luther who might be able to make some shots when they're, the points are so hard mm -hmm. to come by. Yeah, I mean, uh, we were really concerned about holding Hayes in, in check, and that was uh, what we uh, really wanted to look at. I uh, thought we did a pretty good job of that. Hap got going a little bit. Um, so, you know, we, had to, we, we went with uh, 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 guys that uh, – uh, we were playing good defense, and, and uh, we, were, we really felt that we had to hold them uh, down and hold those two guys down specifically. So 32% from the field, we did a good job of that. And, uh, um, uh, but we certainly uh, could have done some other things better. Uh, Jamie, when you, you guys had a couple of opportunities in the second half where you took like a five-point lead, and then mm, it seemed like yeah. it was a five-point lead for – you know, four right. or five minutes. How, how frustrating is it when you have a lead and you kind of have a control and you can't add to it? A couple open looks. I mean, any shots you want to get, you want to take, and they didn't go down. And and that was, you know, that you you, you recognize that where we could have broke it open a little bit. And uh, I know the one in front from our bench that Cameron had, and and uh, another open three that we had, another uh, mid-range shot. Um, and uh, you know, yeah, obviously those were those were big. Um, kept them around. Uh, we wanted to uh, increase that lead, but uh, 
the, you know, the execution was good. I mean, you, you hope you're going to make it, make shoot it a little bit better, and uh, we didn't, and not well enough to do it. But again, we outshot them from the field. Um, uh, they they got the rebounds going in the second half, and that's really probably I think what, what got away from us. All the way back left, Coach Dixon, uh, you guys hold Koenig and Hayes in check, but Ethan Happ had 15 points, uh, 12 in the second half. What did you think of his play, especially in, in that second half? Well, I mean, I think obviously the early and the, the fouls early were put him in a situation, uh, and uh, they were in bonus, you know, a, a minute into the half. So it really was uh, an interesting. Uh, 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 situation to deal with but uh, he's a very good player he's got uh, uh, we wanted to uh, limit his touches we did a pretty good job especially in the first half but uh, second half he seemed to get a lot more isolations in the post and uh, hurt us around the basket with some tough uh, finishes this is for Jamie and Jamal Jamal I know it's you know tough right after a loss but for Jamie what has James meant to your program over the last four years and Jamal what's it been like playing with James for the last four, three years. Jamel, if you start, and then we'll go to coach. <clears throat> um, playing with, I actually um, been pl knowing James my whole life, so you know, seeing him progress every year and seeing him being a leader on the floor is very like crucial to me. So I just learn from him every day in practice. Um, he's a great player, you know. Um, I hopefully he's one of the underrated guards in this league. So, you know, um, I hope the best for him. And, um, my year with him here is great, awesome times with him. Uh, again, uh, I talked to the team afterwards and, and, and really addressed uh, uh, James and, and his importance and, and just the uh, thankfulness I have for having the ability to coach him for four years and, and what he's done. His character, his uh, unselfishness, um, his dedication, uh, simply uh, you know, re remarkable. And I think everybody knows it, and uh, we can't, uh, can't say enough. And uh, I think our players know it, and uh, they feel it, and I think uh, – they really wanted more, I think, to win for him and, and uh, the other three seniors more than anybody. Right down there, left-hand side. Yeah, Jamie, you, you held them to, what, eight points with, like, with about five minutes left in the first half. And then it seems like they get a bigger lead going into halftime. What happened those last few minutes? Uh, they hit the three. We made a mistake defensively on that. Uh, and you know, we got, uh, that, that hurt us. That, that obviously uh, uh, got it to six. Um, we didn't finish it at the end. Uh, as well, and so uh, that caught up to us. Uh, but um, you know, you, you, you're, they're going to make uh, make some shots, and, and that three was big going into halftime. But it still gave us a six point lead, kept the six point lead, and you know that was uh, a, simply a breakdown. We knew what we wanted to do, we didn't do it. Jamie, you said you were going to use a lot of different guys on Hayes, and I counted at least five. How did mm -hmm. that go during the game with the switching off and? and that? How do you think you guys did in shutting him down? Yeah, well, he went three for 17. So, I mean, uh, we, we thought that was what we uh, was going to be a key for us, and, and, and I thought we did a great job of that. We didn't allow him to get around the basket. You know, he got his points really from the free throw line. And, you know, I, again, I, I thought we defended those well. And so, um, you know, it was uh, – it, that's what we wanted to do. I mean, we, we just got to – you know, we held him to 32%. So, defensively, we did the things we needed to do. Uh, I, I just think you, you got to shoot it better from the free throw line. You got to make a couple open threes a little bit more, and uh, you know certainly that would have been a, a difference. Uh, but the rebounding, I threw again. I mentioned I know a couple times, but uh, we're up six on the rebounds in the first half, and we end up getting out rebound by seven in the second half. And they seem to get the ones tipped out of bounds, the uh, the caroms, and uh, those hurt us. James, team only has six assists now. You had four of them, but one of the better assist teams in the ACC and in the country. What kind of happened there? Was it just you know the pace, the tempo, the way that Wisconsin was playing defense? Why didn't you guys have more assists tonight? Uh, I don't think I don't think we were you know overly selfish when we were on offense. Um, I think we were finding an open guy. Uh, I think it just came down to us missing some shots that you know we would normally make, and um, I think that's pretty much what it came down to. Front row. Jamie, what needs to happen to get this program back to the point where it's a Sweet 16 team, which had become sort of the norm? Um, I mean, we got to win win a game down, uh, win tonight's game, and win the next game. I mean, we're we're in position, and uh, we didn't get it done. So, you know, we got to get better. I mean, uh, you know, we get a lot of a lot of teams are lost today. A lot of good teams had great seasons, and they won't be in Sweet 16. So. You can be as good as as you want, but you got to win win a, win two in the first weekend, and you got to make some uh, 
uh, make some plays. But uh, certainly, uh, we were in position. We were good enough to win this, uh, but we didn't. And uh, you know, we're going to get, uh, uh, as I talk to our guys about the things we can learn with all the returning guys uh, that we have. You know, we've got to look at this as uh, um, an opportunity to, to, to improve on some things going forward. Danny, real quick, is that a fair starting point standard for where this program, your expectations are for it to be a, a team that's playing on the second weekend or the second week every year? I mean, I, I, you know, that's obviously that gets made so mad. I mean, is Michigan State now they didn't win today, so does that make them a, your standard? I mean, you know, it's it's it comes down to a tournament, one game. I mean. We were in position to do it. We didn't get it done. I mean, uh, uh, we're never satisfied in any loss. So this was a loss, and, and uh, uh, standard or no standard, it's, it, we're not satisfied. Back right over here. Coach Dixon, I see you sitting there. I think you're looking at the stat sheet, and you're shaking your head. What are you looking at? Um, I mean, I mentioned it three, four times, the rebounds. So we'll go back to that one, um, rebounds. We were up six in the first half, and then we ended up down one. So we got rebound by seven. Let a game like this stick with you. I mean, uh, I don't know. I'll let you know. I mean, we'll, we'll see how it plays out. But, uh, you know, it's, I, feel, I feel for, I feel for uh, James. I feel for the seniors. I mean, we, we really talked to those guys, the three seniors, the graduate seniors. And, and they didn't play a lot of minutes, but they were, they were critical to our program and, and to giving us depth and uh, giving us uh, 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 attitude and work ethic, and so, you know, really, that's that's the thing that sticks with me more than anything. And will. Anything else for the gentleman from Pitt? Okay, gentlemen, thank you All very right, much thank for you. your time. Thank you. The victorious uh, Badgers of Wisconsin are with us. Ethan Happ, Vito Brown represent the student body. Coach Greg Gard is here. We're going to ask him to make a statement on the game that just concluded, and then we'll go to questions for all three gentlemen on the dais. Greg, please. Thank you. Extremely happy for our guys from a standpoint of, as I told them after the game, I wasn't sure three months ago that if we could have counted on our defense or five months ago to, to win a game. Um, but this game obviously came down to being able to get stops defensively when offensively the gears were grinding. We were having a hard time putting the ball in the basket. But to be able to defensively lock down and, and really uh, play probably defensively as well as we played in a long time and then get on the glass the second half was the two reasons I think we won this game, to be able to get to the free throw line, control the, uh, the glass most of the second half, get to the offensive glass, and then to be able to turn the points in the paint tied from the first half to the second half. Um, obviously, uh, to the defensive job is obvious when you look at numbers uh, that, that Vito did here on, on Michael Young as well as other guys and, and the job we did on Artis, two terrific players that uh, the more and more film I watched, I, didn't, uh, I was a little nervous about our defense. But um, obviously, these guys have done a phenomenal job. Extremely proud of how they've worked and battled and keep finding a way. And that's obviously this time of year. It's you 
find a way to get things done and, and move on to what's next. First question is back on the left-hand side. This will be number two right here. Go, please. Coach, uh, what would you think of Ethan's uh, debut performance in the, in the NCAA tournament? Well, I'll be able to find things on film that uh, he can – he asked me if he could still keep the two plays I put in for him, even though we had a couple turnovers, right, Ethan, on him? But, uh, no, I thought he, uh, he he really got us going in the second half. We tried to get some things going to the rim. We wanted to get a lot of paint touches. Uh, we needed to get to the free throw line, and that's how this team has kind of grown in its identity through the year um, of really playing in the paint and, and growing and maturing in there. And obviously, he's he's one that's grown up a lot throughout the year. But uh, for him to step onto this stage and do some do what he did and, and produce and, and help us. Uh, help his team get this victory is obviously important for his growth, but it, more importantly, it's uh, great for our team. Right hand side. For uh, Vito, could you describe, please, the uh, three pointer with a couple minutes to go off that offensive rebound and you know, just how big of a shot that was? And then for uh, Greg, just how, how often were you able to get what you wanted offensively, you know, regardless of the missed shots? Vito, first, please, <coughs> about regarding the shot. Uh, yeah, I, first off, to be able to keep the ball alive, that was the biggest thing. And uh, we knew at that moment of the game, we had to make them pay for every mistake that they make. So, uh, you know, it was an open shot. I was 10 toes to the rim, so I was just ready to shoot it. And uh, I think uh, from then on, that helped us with our momentum, and uh, we were able to get another stop in the next play. Well, to the, I thought, for the most part, the shot quality was pretty good. I obviously go through the film tonight and evaluate and grade every shot. But I thought, for the most part, we got pretty good looks. There was. There were several times, and I won't we'll go through individually, but we had a chance to finish around the rim. We, get, we had perimeter players get there on dribble drives. We were able to touch the post, whether it was off a cut uh, or a direct post feed that we didn't finish and complete plays inside. And, and that's an area that this team has tried to grow through and mature as the year's gone on. So uh, we were able to make enough. Obviously, the three-point play uh, there at the end that uh, Ethan had was a big one and be able to finish that play. Um, but you know, that's an area that this group has tried to grow in in terms of finishing inside. Um, but I, I think for the most part, I thought the shots we took were, were decent. And we, the threes, for the most part, were wide open. With, with uh, that we got a little jump shot happy early. I thought early we didn't touch the post enough uh, early in the game as they ran out to that 12-3 lead or so. But I thought as the game settled in a little bit, we got better at touching the post. And, and we went back to a few more set calls to make sure the ball went in and then played inside out. And, Obviously, you still got to make enough shots to get things done, but uh, you know the quality. I think I'm pretty satisfied with. Two questions in the front row. Go. Uh, I have a little bit of a different question for each one of you, Ethan. You came into the team this year, and no one really knew who you were. Yet you led us tonight with 15 points and really did what you had to do when it mattered. What has it been like to really have gotten such a huge role in this team so quickly? And to Greg. What has it been like watching Ethan develop as quickly as he has? And then to Vito, can you teach Ethan to shoot the uh, yeah, three-pointer, please? Ethan first. Um, I mean, I got to credit my teammates for helping me along the, the process of the season. I've, I've had good games. I've had bad games. And they've told me not to get too high or too low. And coaches echoed that to me as well. And then um, in the second half of the season, coach started uh, you know, kind of getting a point to get me the ball a little bit more. And that kind of helped me take another step up the ladder that I needed to. And I think those are those are two of the biggest things. Well, I think he's, as he said, he's matured as the year's gone on. I think he's figured some things out. He's gone through the typical pattern that a freshman does. You know, there's games when he looks like a junior or senior, and there's games when he looks like a freshman. So and sometimes it's within the four minute between media timeouts. He changes um, back and forth. But I, I think he's become much more consistent, probably since Probably since our Nebraska game at home, I think, is where I really noticed him turn the corner in, in terms of becoming more consistent. And he didn't play well in that game. But uh, he was able to rebound from that. And since then, I've seen more of a consistent um, demeanor with him. He doesn't get frustrated as, as quickly and as easily as he did early in the year. And like I said, it's not, not anything I haven't seen any other freshman go through. Um, the biggest thing for him was to stick to it and, and not deviate from the plan and the process. And he's done a good job of that. Front row again. Not answering, or was that a question? Was that even a question? Threes. Yeah, um, <clears throat> we plan on making him three in this this summer, so uh, we we gonna keep working with him. Uh, he's gonna help me on the inside, and I can help him with his shot. So uh, we're we're rooming together all the time. So you know, 
We'll work on it. Uh, first one <clears throat> is for Vito. Uh, great game tonight. Obviously, you like did very well on defense, keeping the guys like to low scoring, tough shots. Offensively, you also stepped up. One of the best shooting percentages on the team tonight. Would you consider this one of your best overall games this year? Uh, and how <coughs> has how has like the previous experience in the tournament helped you with that? I also have a question. Uh, I mean, yeah, I, I don't look at it as, as an a individual um, performance. I think it was a team effort all the way through. Um, it, it, whether or not it was guys squeezing off of other guys and helping me on the inside or, you know, just boxing out because I wasn't always boxing out like I should. So they really uh, picked up for me in that way. Um, but then, yeah, I mean, last year definitely helps. I mean, I played a few seconds here and there, but I still got to know what it was like. I got to know how hard teams do go, and uh, it was no different this game. Straight back. This question is for Ethan and Greg. Um, in a game where points were at such a premium, to see Vito hit a couple of the big three-pointers like he did, uh, Ethan, from your perspective, what was it like to see when your teammates hit a big shot like that? And Greg, from your perspective as a coach, what, what did Ethan, that give you? Ethan first, please. Uh, I mean, Vito's my brother. He, we've been rooming together um, for two years now, and I was, I was so proud of him. I mean. He, like, he's been my older brother uh, since I stepped on campus, and to see him hit those big shots when we run down the court, giving him a high five, I, I was just really, I was really happy for him. Well, I think any time you can get a boost like that, and again, to be able to score off an offensive rebound, whether it was getting fouled off the offensive rebound as we did late uh, with Nigel, or we were able to find open three-point shooters, um, you know, any time you can see the ball go in, it's always good for the confidence and, uh, you know, good for the soul. So it, Obviously, to be able to, to get enough of them to go in, I think we were a little bit better offensively the second half. We were very good defensively both halves. Um, you know, that's always a uh, it's a welcome sign. You know, and obviously Vito, how he's grown and matured. And we talked about Ethan's growth and maturity, but how far this kid has come uh, from a year ago when he came into the game to give Frank Kaminsky a cup of water, and then he was right back out before, right, Vito? Yeah, I mean, he's <laughs> so for his. What he's been able to contribute and help this team grow with this year is a, obviously a huge compliment to him. Right hand side, gentlemen. Hi, guys. This will be a good segue because, I, Vito, you said yesterday I asked you how many meaningful minutes you played during the, <laughs> you know, the tournament. You said meaningful. <laughs> um, and you know, Ethan, you were red shirting. I wonder uh, what your coach, you know, what his role is, what the bond was like last year to keep you guys, you know, up and and and, and feeling a part of the whole thing, which of course you were, but on behind the scenes and uh, to to help him get his first NCAA tournament win now, you know, how, what, how special is that part of it that you kind of, you know, a milestone for him? Vito first, then Ethan. Uh, yeah, like you said, um, it's easy to, to get discouraged, you know, when you're not playing. And uh, I know he was red shirting and that was tough for him. But in the same token, uh, What's most important is the team's victory, and uh, you know whether or not you know it's meaningful minutes or seconds. You know it, it's a purpose why we went out there, and um, it, whether or not it was to get Frank a cup of water, that's what he needed, and so that's what the team needed, and uh, we're fine with that. And we also knew that our time would come for this, and uh, we would be counted on someday. So we we never got down on ourselves about that. Uh, on getting Coach Garda's first NCAA win, I mean, it's easy to play for a guy like that who. I tell all my friends and family how much time he puts in um, watching film other teams, not only that, but practice film of us. And um, when a guy cares that much, uh, it's easy to play, for, play hard for him. We are halfway through this session. We have four questions up. Go ahead. This is for any of you guys over here on the uh, left. Um, you know, crazy things happen. Uh, that's why it's called March Madness, as we saw with Michigan State. Uh, is the tonight's game just kind of a perfect example of it's just about advancing and moving on? Sometimes it doesn't matter how great you play. It's just about getting that win, right? Vito, you want to take that one? Yeah, like you said, um, it's not always going to be pretty. And, uh, you know, we saw our, our fellow Big Ten brother get knocked out today. And I think, um, you know, that was good for us to see in the sense that uh, we know anything is possible. Like you said, um, any team could beat any team. So. Uh, we definitely went out there knowing that uh, Pittsburgh was going to come at us real hard, and uh, we did a good job of counteracting that. Back left. Ethan, I know this was your 35th game of the season, but your first in the NCAA tournament. Were you playing through any nerves at all tonight? Uh, yeah, there was definitely, I mean, 
I've been waiting to do this since I was a little kid. So anytime you get a, you know, accomplish a goal, a dream you've had, uh, you're going to be a little, little nervous in it. It just lasted a few possessions. Um, I was a little too excited. And uh, I think once we had that first immediate timeout after like six, seven minutes in, I think that's when I started kind of settle down a little bit. Standing up in the back on the right. For Greg over here. After Ethan hit that first free throw, were you guys debating whether to have him miss the next one intentionally? And how did that sequence play out? Yes, we were. But then we decided, told him to go make it. But then he missed it. <laughs> but then we got the offensive rebound. So hey, it worked out great. Missed it, ran off more time, and he got the ball back, and went back to the free throw line. So um, yeah. just how we drew it up. <laughs> on the right yeah, answer. we were debating on it. And, we decided we were going to go ahead and let him make it um, and then play it out from there. On the right again. For any, of you, for any of you, what did you think of the crowd that was here tonight? I mean, Badger fans always travel well, but tonight it seemed like they were getting behind you a lot. Vito first, then Ethan. Yeah, um, I mean, I looked in the pregame and I didn't see it was kind of sparse out there, so I wasn't sure. And then all of a sudden we were making that run back in the second half. I was like, when did all these people get here? It's, it's crazy. And uh, it felt like we were really at the Cole Center, and I think that was a, a big part of our success tonight. Uh, I think, I mean, first of all, thank you to the fans that came out, because that was, it, it was like a home game. I mean, because there weren't as many Pitt fans for sure. And um, whenever we were you know, making a run, you can, you can feel the energy and um, feed off of it. Straight back. Coach, I saw you before the game. You had your, definitely had your game face on. Mm -hmm. How different was this experience for you now as the head coach? We talked about it before we left Madison, but how different was it, and how good does it feel to get that first victory? Oh, it was definitely different. Um, I probably had the same pregame nerves that Ethan did. It's my first lap through this too. So um, it was uh, once we got going. I, you know, it really probably hit me yesterday when we came for our open shoot around. Like, holy smokes, you're the guy that has to walk around and change all the drills and do that and do all the interviews. And uh, then this morning, too, when we came for our shoot around. Um, so you, when you caught me, I was probably doing my nervous pace, uh, collecting my thoughts before I went to ta talk to the team. But these guys have made it this transition as easy as anything could be in terms of how they've responded, how they've worked. They've answered challenges for the most part that we've thrown on the table for them throughout the year. So. Um, but it's an exciting time. I mean, I, it'd be something wrong with me if I wasn't a little giddy and a little wound a little tight before the game. So, um, you know, it's an exciting time of year. This is like what these guys work for. You know, they put a lot of time in to hopefully be in this position. And you always want to make sure you seize the opportunity. And these guys did a terrific job of that tonight. Way in the back. This is for Ethan. You were visibly frustrated after the Nebraska game saying you didn't do what the coaches wanted you to. Did, would you say that you did what they wanted you to do, wanted you to do tonight? Uh, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, I, yeah, I didn't shy away from contact. But uh, I know going through film and watching the game, there's going to be a good amount of mistakes by me. Um, and I'm sure we'll watch that uh, a few times. But I think from what coach told me to do um, from the Nebraska game, I think I applied those in the game a little bit more. Left-hand side. Ethan, you had 15 points, uh, 12 in the second half, but you also had nine rebounds, big defensive rebounds. You had three dimes, some big ones to set up Vito. How happy are you that you were able to contribute in so, so many different ways in this win? Uh, I mean, it's, it's nice to hear those numbers, I guess. But at the end of the day, you're just playing the game and um, doing anything you can to help your team win. I mean, it could, if I score zero points and have zero assists and our team still wins, then I'm, I'm at the same level of happiness, I guess. Right hand side here. Greg, forgive me if you've been asked already, but um, have you heard from Bo? And did After you, the game? Maybe did you before the game and have you since? I haven't checked my phone yet, so um, I've been doing all the media requirements, so I haven't had a chance to check my phone. But uh, before, yeah, we, he said good luck, all those, those type of things. I'm sure he's watching. Or would be watching, um, but I haven't. I haven't checked. I haven't got to my cell phone yet since after the game. Front row, uh, Coach Guard, you guys only shot 25% in the first half, which is pretty below par for you guys. 
Um, did you have to say anything to the guys to keep them focused and keep them going at halftime, or did they take it upon themselves to really buckle down and go back out for the second half ready to play? Well, all we talked about was, you know, we were as long as we were getting good looks and the quality of the shot was good, the ball was going to go in. The biggest thing we talked about at halftime was there were points and times in that first half I didn't think we matched their physicality. And that's what we had talked about for four days since Selection Sunday of how physical this game was going to be. And every time we played Pitt, it's been a very similar type of game. Scores fluctuated a little bit in the years we played them, but it's been a very similar type. 15 feet and in, extremely physical. Buckets are hard to come by. So it was just a matter of making sure we continue to be solid defensively, but we needed to win more physical battles. And I thought that's where we were much better tonight than we were a week ago in the Big Ten tournament. We battled better tonight, and we, we were on the floor more tonight, and we were more physical in the paint. And that ended up being the difference between what we did on the glass and then what we were able to do defensively. We have time for two more questions. They're both going to come from the back and the right. Go. This is for both Vito and Ethan. Uh, if you could describe maybe in just one word uh, what your emotions were once Nigel hit that second free throw uh, to ice the game, what would you say? <clears throat> Vito, you go first. Ecstatic. Um, that's why my voice is a little bit gone, because I was yelling so hard, harder than I had this whole season uh, when he got that rebound. Uh, it's going to be weird, but nervous, because I wasn't aware that we were up by um, four. I thought we were only up by three. So it wasn't like a selfish, like trying to get a steal at the end there. I was just trying to stop them from making like a game tying full quarter. <laughs> Final question, go. Ethan, you said you had the nerves at the beginning of the game, but the second half, did you really feel things click and start to get going for you at the beginning there? Yeah, I mean, obviously, Coach did a good job of calling up some plays for me, and then my teammates got the ball into me. And anytime um, you have confidence from your teammates and your coaches, the left, the only thing left for you to do is put the ball in the hoop. So it was, it was kind of um, a shaky start for me, but then things started to flow in the second half. Okay, gentlemen, thank you very much. Congratulations. We will see you all tomorrow.